Well, it wasn't very long ago. Um, he always, when, when he flew knife edge with his airplane, you roll the airplane up on its side, and most of these things, when you give it top rudder to hold the nose up like that, most airplanes are laterally stable, so when you give it right rudder, it wants to roll right in, t in, in addition to, to uh, giving a yaw to the right. So you have to deal with that on your sticks. Oh, and on top of that, the airplane wants to pitch. So when you're actually just trying to knife edge, you're pushing the sticks all over the place, and, uh, and you can do it, but it's not really that precise. Well, these radios have the ability to take care of all that for you, so you can roll it up on its side and push right rudder, and it'll just go So, So if you think, hey, man, that slow roll that that guy did at the field this weekend was impressive, a good mix, a good setup in the radio uh, goes a long way towards making that happen. And, um, and it hides some of the traits about, you know, uh, that the airplane are inherent in the airplane. It hides them from you so that you can concentrate on rudder being yaw and, and aileron being roll and elevator being pitch. So that's just one example of how you use it, and I'll go into physically how you do that in a little bit. But I think probably more important, something that you guys could all do, the first time you ever, um, you know, want to do a mix, there's an easy way to deal with it. Let's say you've got your super duper uh, urge here with your tie-dyed target paint job on it, <laughs> and you just got it done, and you, you uh, plug in your your servos, you have multiple servos, two aileron servos, tape hanging off of it and everything. Um, this airplane is several, many years old. But uh, anyway, you, when you have multiple servos, uh, you can plug them into channels on the receiver that are available. This is just a six channel receiver, so uh, the right aileron is plugged into the aileron channel, but I just plugged the left aileron into the flat channel. So if you all of a sudden come out to the field, uh, with this thing and you want to fly it uh, and you have it plugged in as it is what are you going to do to uh, to allow yourself the opportunity to to use those two aileron servos well that's certainly one means of mixing right off the bat so you plug it in and you say what in the world is going on here I only have one aileron I don't, I don't know what's going on, you know, I, I, uh, I have this plugged into another channel, how could I make that an aileron too? Well, that's the first way to do mixing, okay, so, so we knew when we plugged the right aileron into the mix, that's the master channel, it works when I move this aileron stick, okay, but now I want this aileron to work too. Well, so just to show you a simple example of what you would do to make that aileron work, and then I'm going to show you a better way to do it. But I'll show you just, just as an example for mixing is I want what's plugged into aux one to work when I move the aileron. So aileron is the master channel. So when I move the stick, which is the master channel, what does it do to that surface? So you go in here, and I'll try not to jiggle things around too much here. So you go back down in here into mixing. Every radio, no matter what brand, this happens to be a Spectrum DX18. All of the computer um, uh, radios uh, uh, in Spectrum have similar logic. Uh, depending on the age, it's a little bit different software, but they have similar logic. And, um, and every computer radio of any brand has something that will, will do the same thing, but maybe be named a little differently. So what you have here is a mixing screen. And uh, in that mixing screen, you have the ability to to uh, basically set up anything that you want. So you go to a programmable mix right here, and you see this PM Mix 1, or P Mix 1. So you, you, uh, you select that, and the first thing that it does in a spectrum radio is it gives you the option for a normal mix or a curved mix. We're going to start out real simple. We don't care. Uh, there are situations where when you move the stick a little bit, you need a certain amount of mix, and when you move the stick a little bit more, it needs a different amount of mix, and when you move it again, it needs a different amount of mix, and sometimes the sign could change on the mix. So, so the curved mixes allow you to, to make a nonlinear relationship between the master channel and the slave channel. Well, here we're just going to do a linear or normal mix here. So I select that, and so you have the opportunity to, to pick the master channel and pick the slave channel. So right now it's all inhibited, so I just select that, and I say when I move the aileron, that's the master channel right there. So, so uh, 
the uh, one thing that's extremely useful that they added in later versions of the Spectrum software is to have the servo monitor displayed right there on the mix screen so that as you're moving sticks in here, look at this, I move the aileron, look at the aileron up here moving left and right as I move that. So you know that's the channel that you want for the master and you see what the relationship of it is. So now I say, okay, I want to mix uh, aileron into aux one. So we come over here and find that aux one that we, you know, that's where you, there it is. So now aileron into aux one. So it says when I move aileron, aux one's going to move. Well, how much is it going to move? Well, you come down here to rate, and um, um, here's the, on the left side of the screen is when you give it left aileron, how much is the other aileron going to move? Well, I'm just going to tell it to move in this, uh, 100% here. So when you move the aileron to the left, I want the aux one to move 100%. So it's not doing anything. So you say, why isn't it? Well, you come down here, and I, there's, a, there's a switch that can control that mix. And right now it's set to inhibit, which basically means the mix isn't active at all. You can put it, uh, you can assign it to any switch on the transmitter if you don't want to use it all the time. Or you can just say in the case of ailerons, you do want to use it all the time. You want two ailerons, so you just put on. You select on. So now when I move the stick to the left, you notice the aileron's working here. So simple as that. Now, but it's not working to the right, and the reason is because up here you need to assign also 100 when you when you move the stick to the right and you can see you can put it anywhere in between mixes aren't always a hundred you know one to one uh, so there it is there's aileron mixing okay another very important thing here well and notice on aux one right here in the screen when i move the aileron stick now you see aux one is moving with the aileron both of them are moving so there's your mix that's how you determine how much mix you have and if it's symmetric and all of that you can tell by the numbers that it's symmetric but but it, it's a it's a second or a really useful way to check that is to is to always look at it on the monitor and you see that they go to the same endpoints they go to the same center and it tells you that you have symmetry in the in the uh, mix logic the rest of it has to come from your linkages okay yeah I mean you you could set that up with sub trim you could set it up with linkage adjustments and whatever, but you want to see those two be symmetrical to each other. The other thing that's important here is, let me just show you, um, you have the option here of, uh, of not allowing the trim to go across to the mix. So right now, if you, we know that the right aileron is the master channel, that, that's plugged into the aileron, so you can use the aileron trim to, to trim that. If you don't uh, activate the trim in the mix, look at this, when I give it right aileron trim, the left aileron's not trimming with it, so that'll drive you crazy. And uh, so, so uh, you want to activate that. Okay. So when you activate this thing, as simple as that. Now that look at the trim, both ailerons are moving. You see that? So real important. All right. Now, um, so right now you see that the aileron is called aileron, just like it was. And the other one that's mixed into it is still called aux one, and they're mixed, and it's acting as ailerons, and you can go out and you can fly and you can do what you want. But what if you needed to do some more work um, on that left wing uh, to set something else on that on that particular channel? Uh, like I'll give you an example. If you want to mix something else into aileron, uh, let's just go to an aileron to rudder mix now. Let's say, we, so now we have aileron set up on this thing, and all we did was mix that left channel into it. And, um, and, and now we want to say, um, when I give this thing aileron, I want the rudder to, to coordinate the turn automatically. A lot of planes like that big beaver and a lot of these really big cubs and, and, and large airplanes, you notice when you just roll and pull, the airplane kind of flies uncoordinated, the nose doesn't you know get into the turn and and in a full-scale airplane when you make a turn you're you're leading with rudder too so they call it uh, stepping on the ball you're you're, you're coordinating the turn by by uh, uh, putting proverse rudder into the turn same thing really has to happen on models um, especially the larger they get so there's a mix here it's a canned mix that's uh, that's aileron to rudder that would be really good on the Cetabria um, and so 
like let's say I wanted to to use this can mix and I wanted to make it so that when I gave it you know let's just put in I don't know 20 percent of rudder with aileron here and then I'm going to uh, turn that one on you know obviously it won't work unless you turn it on so now as I give it aileron look at right aileron there's right rudder left aileron there's left rudder so that's a simple mix that you can adjust the amount so you go up and you fly your airplane and as you do a roll you can tell when it's when the turn is coordinated or not a lot of airplanes fly with the nose just behind the turn I see that all the time I'm very conscious of rudder and um, but very seldom will you see it that you have too much to where you're leading in and it's actually going into kind of almost a spiral so you can just turn it you know to where you adjust it up and down here and give it the same amount left and right or if you want to change it to where you just give one one direction or the other you see you can make it asymmetric like that so when you're going to the right it gives it more right rudder when you're going to the left it gives it less left rudder so you have the ability to adjust it anywhere that you want and on top of that you can assign it to any switch and so any of these switches up here that aren't used for something else you can assign it and what's one thing that's pretty neat on the uh, spectrum software is let's say I wanted to assign it to this switch right here and I don't know what it is well right on the front of the transmitter it says E that's switch E but what if you didn't know that well you just flip it and look at that it updates on the screen the software finds it it says oh that's switch E so now you have the ability to change that mix as a function of of uh, the switch position so you see this little this little uh, icon right here there's position one there's position zero and there's position two so you can change this mix as a function of where the switch is and you can have it so it's zero mix and one switch position or whatever yes uh-huh you just Okay, watch. Okay, so now the rudder, oh, we have to have the switch in the right position. The switch it has to be in. Let's just turn it back to on here so you can see it. So going that way, it moves to the left. Going that way, it moves to the left. So that's how you reverse it. Um, it's just a uh, yeah. It's just a, a sign. So it says if that if it's a positive number, it says that when you move the master stick in in one direction, it goes in the same direction. Uh, if you put a negative, it goes in the opposite direction. Uh, here in this aileron to rudder mix, it knows that that you want the rudder in the in the same direction of the turn, so the signs are the same. So now after we did all this, let me inhibit this and let me just show you something. Um, right in that in that um, in that uh, main screen here, let me get back here. Okay, so here's that monitor shown on a different <laughs> screen. So now you can see that we still have uh, one, the right aileron is called aileron, and the left aileron is called aux one. And so any time that you want to make a change to the aux one channel and, and all of that, or, or to the left aileron, you have to think aux one. You have to think of where it's plugged in. So I'm going to show you a canned mix in here that takes care of all of that and doesn't doesn't leave you with any problems um, and um, so let's go back to the mixing screen here and let's turn this mix off we'll inhibit it all right so I inhibited that that uh, aileron to aux one mix and so now we're back to our you know we just bound our airplane and uh, and uh, and then we're faced with this so what do you do well watch this most people don't think about this but you go down to the system menu and oh by the way you notice I don't have a prop on this airplane when you're sitting here working with these things on the tabletop and you have a prop on it and you've got an active speed control and you're moving sticks around you know you can get you can get that pretty easy and you don't want your airplane to attack you trust me uh, I probably still have a scar somewhere but uh so take the prop off it's the easiest thing to do but you do have to have the speed control plugged in to, to make the radio work because it's on a BEC a battery eliminator okay so 
but the reason I wanted to bring that up is because I want to go into the system menu. It's like the one you get in when you turn the transmitter off and then hold and hold the button down and turn the transmitter back on. That's the system menu. This is the main function menu here, but I want to go into the system menu. So uh, in, in these uh, uh, spectrum radios, you have the ability to jump from one menu to the other without turning the transmitter off. That's something that they've upgraded in the software in recent years. So um, let me go back and find that again since it timed out. And so, if you upgrade the code on that, make sure that you back up all your... Um, uh, uh, anytime models. you upgrade software on any transmitter, ask Larry too, uh, <laughs> and Clyde, that, that you, uh, you back up the models because uh, there are situations where you lose them. And, uh, and it's just a, it's a card, you know, that you, you can uh, back up pretty easily. All right, so I'm going into the system menu, and it says, hey, when we're, when we're doing this, the RF's going to be disabled. You sure you want to do it? And because I don't have a prop on it, and the airplane's not going to take off or do anything crazy, my motor's not sitting there idling on the runway, then I'm going to say yes. So it goes into that system menu. And we had just bound this thing. We just plugged it in. And, and since I'm in the system menu, I can't make it work. But... I want to mix ailerons and all of that. So, so here's a simple way to do it. They have these can mixes that are so simple and so straightforward, it's in aircraft type. See this right here, aircraft type. So it says, how's your, how's your model set up servo-wise? Well, here's what it is right now. The wing is set to normal, which means you have a single servo in the middle that's feeding both ailerons. Well, we don't. We have two aileron servos. So you just bring the cursor down to that and you say, dual aileron. So you see a servo on each on each aileron. And we choose that. Did nothing else. Did nothing else. So I'm going to come up here now to the, go back to the uh, the main menu and the airplane will start talking here again in a second. There it is. Look at that. I didn't do anything. The mix is all in that airplane aircraft type. And so now here's what's exciting about it is you come back to the monitor and you notice you have right aileron R A L and left aileron. So now the the radio is it knows what you have plugged into that other channel. Now I'll, I'll caution you the wing type, um, you know, to, to to use these functions, you have to plug the servo into the channel they expect you to plug it into, and it's easy to check, you know, where you are, but it gives you this functionality, and you see the trim works on both sides already. I didn't do anything. And it's, and it's moving in the direction that you want it to, everything. So, so uh, you can go back to that, and you can set up all kinds of complex airplanes um, using that same canned uh, aircraft type uh, menu. Like, what are the other options in the wing? Well, you can have flapperons to where, where when you deploy flaps, the ailerons can droop as flaps. And, uh, you know, and uh, I'll give yourself the opportunity to do that. You can have it to where you have... Um, one aileron servo feeding the, the two ailerons and one flap servo. Some airplanes are set up that way. You can have one aileron with two flaps and you can have two ailerons with one flap and so on and so on. And so basically, depending on how you have your servos arranged in your, in your wing, you can just select the proper one here. It'll assign all the names to those specific servos It'll, it'll, you have to kind of consult the documentation to know where to plug things in, but it's like, let's say we chose two aileron, two flaps, and um, it's going to be kind of crazy here, but I just want to show you, if we go back to the, to the main screen and get into the monitor, you can figure out what's plugged into what here. So it still has the left aileron plugged into aux one. It has the left flap plugged into, looks like the, the, uh, yeah, throttle, right, right aileron, elevator, right. So the left flap is plugged into the gear channel. So, you know, I don't have a flap servo in there. So you can look at that screen and know where to plug things in, you know, provided you have enough channels. This is a six channel receiver, so we don't, you know, that option won't work for us. Okay, so, so now um, we want to go back and turn it back to the wing type that we expect it to be. And, um, and while we're there, Come on, aircraft type. So while we're here, I could show you that there's a lot of options for the tail too. So we have dual aileron servos, and you can do you can do a V tail. So in a V tail, 
the, uh, the two servos that are attached work as elevators when they work symmetrically, and they work as rudders when they work asymmetrically. My uh, pylon racer, my quickies are set up that way. And um, you can have um, uh, dual elevator servos. A lot of our, our giant scale airplanes have a separate servo or even double servos on both sides, and you have the ability to, to set that up regularly there. But you notice here it has one rudder servo and two elevator servos. And then here you have dual rudder servos, like you have a, you know, one on the left and one on the right of these big giant scale rudders that you use to, uh, to yeah, or the King Cat, yeah. And so you have the ability to, to, uh, to go through all of these options. So uh, the moral of this story is to, is to utilize the, um, the wing aircraft type first, and then it takes care of all this mixing for you, and suddenly this airplane uh, is... Uh, is very simple to use two aileron servos. All right, so now let's get back to our uh, example, let's say of the, uh, if, if we wanted to get nice slow rolls with our airplane. Um, we can go back down into, see? <laughs> Gotta have the prop off of it. Sometimes you get little little uh, things happen when you're jumping through menus. Okay, so, so I already showed you that you can mix aileron into rudder to coordinate turns on some of these big birds. Um, there's another CAN program in here, and it says rudder into aileron elevator. So, so that is extremely, extremely useful towards making these airplanes not be coupled. And what I mean by that is when you give it aileron, you just want it to roll. And more importantly, when you give it rudder, you just want it to yaw. And so you can do things by just pushing rudder on its side, okay? Like you can do a knife edge loop if you have it mixed right. If you don't, you have to hold aileron and elevator everywhere you are, and the plane's doing this, and you kind of make it through. So if you want to go out to the field and impress your friends by rolling the plane up to its side and just holding top rudder, this is how you do it. So it's a CAN program. You can do this with, with uh, other mixes. You can, you can do a mix, you know, rudder into aileron and rudder into elevator, but this one is kind of like a canned one that takes care of it together in one screen. So now it says... Rudder into aileron. That means the master is rudder. When I move rudder, let's say my airplane wants to roll right in the direction of the rudder. Most airplanes do. So I want it to give a little bit of left aileron. So on the, when I'm giving it left rudder, I want it to give a little bit of opposite aileron. Let's say, just to, so you guys can see it, let me just put in about 10% or something. So when I give it left rudder, oh, we have to see it down here. The switch has to be set somewhere. Okay, so now I'll just turn it on. So now when I give it left rudder, you notice how the ailerons go right a little bit. Now you get up in the air, and Larry and I, you know, have done this with his airplane, and, and you usually have a buddy with you. Uh, usually what you do is you go up and you roll the plane on its side, and you give it right rudder, and if it rolls one way or the other, you remember that, and you land, and then you put a little bit of mix in that would counteract that. Okay, so I have 10% here. Now let's say we get on the other side when you give it right rudder let's say you need um, you know six percent or whatever and they are different on left and right side because you know you have this prop uh, spinning like this and there's a helical flow field that makes the plane really asymmetric a little bit so here it is right rudder gives it a little bit of left aileron left aileron gives a little bit of uh, our left rudder gives it a little bit of right aileron and right rudder gives a little bit of left aileron and so now you get it to where when I push rudder, the wings don't move. So now you're like, great, but now the plane's pitching. It's pitching in or out. So if I'm coming right to left and I roll it up on its side and give it top rudder and it tucks, what do I do? Well, you can put a mix in there with when you give it top rudder, right rudder, that it'll give it some um, up elevator. So let's give it a little up elevator and it doesn't take much. So, oh, that's the left side. So let me go to the right side here. Let me give it so you can see it. When you have a plane that's uh, a foamy, that's flexible, sometimes you can't see some of these things. Okay, see that? I went the wrong way. When I give it right rudder, it's giving it down elevator, and it's already tucking, so I want to just change the sign here. So let me go. All right, here we go. So now when I give it right rudder, it gives it a little bit of up elevator and an opposite aileron. 
Can you imagine yourself having, you know, you're having to think through all this when you're flying it. How cool is it that when you can come across the field and roll it 90 degrees and just put top rudder and the plane just goes right down the field. That's how you do those cool passes at the field. So, so the, the, the gig is up, you know, and uh, so, so that's, that's how mixing works. It's not hard. And, and notice you look at the, at the monitor to tell yourself what you just did. So, so. I gave it right rudder, and you, and uh, well, let me get off that. So I gave it right rudder, and you see the aileron. I don't see it moving. I don't see it moving on the monitor. The elevator, it's just, it's just not a lot. You yeah, can see, you yeah, can it see moves it very little, and that's the reality of how it is in the air. It doesn't take much. So, so what you do is you concentrate on one axis first, get the roll fixed, and then you work on the elevator. Now here's the part that kind of gets uh, sketchy. Um, as you slow down and, and, and have to give it more rudder to hold the nose up higher to, to maintain the altitude, the mix amount changes. And so that's why you get into some of these nonlinear mixes and all that stuff. But I can also tell you, I don't fool with those. I just fly the airplane through it because it's so close. That little bit of difference doesn't make much, you know, it doesn't change things so much. So now what happens is when we can, you know, when we come by and do these low slow rolls, it's just the same thing as that knife edge mix. When I start rolling, I'm, I'm giving a little bit of nose up on the stick. And then as I give it, I start feeding in top rudder. And when I get on its side, it doesn't do anything crazy. And then when I come out of, off the side to invert it, I'm letting out on the, on the top rudder and I'm giving it a little bit of down. And everything is pure because yaw is yaw and roll is roll and pitch is pitch. So the inputs that you give it are not being fought, you know, in the, in the aerodynamics of the airplane. So it really, really cleans up your flying. And, um, and it's simple to do. And it's simple to tell what you're doing by looking at the monitor. You can tell when things are backwards and, and all of that. So, so if there's anything that you learn here from this, go to the aircraft type first. You know, uh, uh, configure the airplane for the no way you have the servos arranged. Go back and check. Make sure that you have the servos plugged into the channels that show up on the monitor. And then you know right aileron is right aileron and left aileron is left aileron. Then when you go in and do any kind of adjustment, um, here's where the monitor comes in good too. Whoops. So let me get out here um, and go back to the main menu. Quick question about that. When, when you have all that together and everything and everything's working, if, if you slow the plane down or speed it up, it's, it's going... Yeah, the mix is a little different at different speeds, right. but, but, but my, my point is, is what I'm asking is, is that when you move the stick, do you have to move it past the point that it's uh, already programmed to? You don't know. No, you don't know that. It adds stick inputs to the mix. Okay. So it, it'll it'll keep working up to the point where you where you run out of travel. Okay. Yeah, Still you you saturate the uh, amount of travel in there, and and that's again where monitor comes in handy, is um, is you can always look. You see, there's a little bit of travel left right here on rudder, uh, because it's only set at plus or minus a hundred. So if you go into travel right here, you see here's here's rudder it's set at plus or minus a hundred. If if you come down into travel and move it to the limit of what it gives you which in this case is 150 and look it goes to the stops you see that's all the physical travel that's available in that pulse width you know okay. so so you you won't run out of control surface uh, and it'll add anything that you put on top of the mix uh, your your stick is the priority and it's added it's to it so okay. so what's good is the mixing is used to to correct um, almost adverse conditions that the uh, adverse response of the airplane to your inputs you want to always think rudder is y'all, rudder is y'all. But if rudder is roll and y'all and pitch, that's not good, you know. And so you're kind of trying to correct it all the time, and it's not a very fun experience. So if you can let the mixing fix some of that for you, and at least you know get 95% of it, and you can, then it, then suddenly I don't care what attitude you're in. When you push rudder, it's going to y'all. It's not going to do anything crazy. And then your 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 flying capabilities really open up. And, uh, and you start really learning how to do more things because you're not fighting the way the plane flies. Um, 
So the one thing I wanted to show you here is that now all of the menus, once you did that aircraft type thing, if I want to adjust the left aileron, I come down here to, to left aileron, see, L-A-L. -L. If I want to adjust the right aileron, I go find where the right, uh, the, it's up here, and so on and so on. So everything that you do now can affect the left and right aileron separately. Um, for example, if, uh, if I look at my airplane and decide, hey, uh, my right aileron's a little high, I only want to change the right aileron. Even though it's being moved by the same stick as the left aileron, there's a separate servo there. So I can adjust the sub trim on that one separately. And uh, so here it is. I go to sub trim and I say, just the right aileron. I want to lower that a little bit. Didn't touch the left aileron. So that's why you have to set these things up with wing type first so that when you go into there and, and want to make some changes to one surface individually of the others, as long as it has a servo on it, you can do that, and it'll tell you that that's that you know aileron or elevator or whatever it is. So it's a it's a really really useful tool. Um, so yes. Well, you can do mixing. Yeah, if you had one servo driving both ailerons, you can't adjust one aileron opposite the, you know, uh, uh, in isolation because there, you're adjusting a servo. Yeah, you're adjusting a servo. If you plug it in a Y, you're adjusting a servo. Uh, if, well, if they two come into one channel and are plugged into the receiver in one channel, it, the radio just knows it's one channel. So, so that's the case where it shows one, one servo is what you would have to use for that case. Even though you have two servos, if you don't plug them into separate channels, then you don't get the ability to adjust them separately. Um, so that's it's that's kind of programming in a nutshell. It's very simple to do, and I'd be happy for each and every one of you, if you said, my plane's doing this, can you show me how to mix this out? You would be amazed at what it would do for you. I'll do it, I'll help you, I'll teach you how to do it. And um, you'd be amazed at, at uh, how the flying experience is improved. You know, Mark was asking a little while ago, he said, when I take off with my airplane, I give it a lot of throttle and the airplane climbs like crazy. And you had mentioned that too. Um, just so everybody understands, um, that's what stability, longitudinal stability is. Longitudinal stability says that if you're at a particular speed and the airplane gets upset that slows it down, the nose will drop and it'll speed up and go back to that trim point. It also says that if you speed up from a particular speed that you're trimmed at, so you're trimmed at, you know, 100 miles an hour, and you speed up from that, it should climb because it's trying to go back to 100 miles an hour. Now we set up our airplanes so that they're not quite as stable, so that that effect is minimized. But on a on an airplane that's really nose heavy, you'll notice that well, when it, its tendency is towards being nose heavy, you'll notice that as you add power, the plane will climb, and. Um, but there is a way to deal with that in a mix. And Mark said, what if I just had it during takeoff when I'm at a lot of power on my cub or whatever, and I, and I want to, um, to give a little bit of down elevator with throttle? How would you do that? Well, first of all, remember that this throttle stick mo moves a whole bunch, and you have the prop off on your desktop. <laughs> but the, the, the throttle stick moves a whole bunch. And so if you're feeding in down elevator with that entire range of throttle, that airplane might do something you don't want it to do, and not good. So I'll show you just real quick how to deal with that. And how much time do we have? I don't you're it's, you're it's you're 10 till late. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so um, let's go into mix here and make, make the mark mix here. So um, we can use mix one again, but I'll pick mix two. <laughs> Uh, one way to deal with that is to put a curve mix in here to have to have no mix at the bottom. Uh, another way is just to have what's called an offset, and let me show you that. Whoops, I went into curve mix. All right, so let's go to the normal mix and come up here and say when I move throttle, it's going to move elevator. And boy, you better be careful doing mixes like this. So, so the first thing I do is I put it on a switch. And so we want it on our trusty switch E here. And, and uh, when the switch is all the way down, we want this to be off. So there's the mix. Nothing's happening here when you're, when you're in that position. So if we're up here in this top position, position zero, what happens? Whoops. So the rate now is, is I don't know, let's just give it 
8% elevator with throttle. And it's hard for me to show you that here because it's going to zing like crazy. But So, oh, let me make sure it has it going the right way here. What we're looking to see is that the elevator is moving with the mix here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, the point is, you can do anything you want here, and and you can put an offset in it such that the mix doesn't engage until way up here at full throttle. So you can say, you know, um, I want an offset to be 80%. So way up here at 80% is where when the throttle is above 80%, it'll put the mix in there, and you can have it on a safety switch so that. Man, I don't want this when I'm up there doing aerobatics. I don't want to try, you know, add power to try to do a loop and the airplane's trimming the nose down. So that's the that's the fear of using these mixes. You can do something that you don't anticipate working against you in a different flight scenario. So I know guys in pattern, they have airplanes that when they're doing a downline, that they'll pull a little bit to the canopy or push a little bit to the belly. So at low throttle, they have a mix to where when they pull the throttle back, it gives it a little down elevator or a little up elevator. It's all great until, you, until you're coming across the field level and you pull the throttle off and the airplane starts pitching or pulling. You know, so, so you've got to realize what you're doing and realize that there are going to be other instances when you, when you um, pull the throttle back that you might not want that mix. So the way that you get around it is you use, you use curve mixes to where at certain st stick positions it doesn't give you as much or any mix and at other positions it gives you more mix. Or you have it on a switch that you remember to flip, you know. <laughs> and I, I personally don't like to flip a lot of switches. I want to, I want the plane to be set up so that I can just flow through the flight and not think about it a lot. And basically, the only switches I use is is low rate, like a pattern type setup, and then and then high rate so you can do the flip flopping. And um, that's it. And I have every single surface set to the high rate together on one switch. And, and to the pattern rates on low switch. And I don't have anything else. And, um, and the rest of it is just the mixing to make the plane fly pure in each axis. And um, so, so you have the ability then to do that kind of mix. And Mark, we can do it at the field. We can look at it and, and um, you know, try to see if it'll help you. Same thing with, with your airplane, you know. And, and uh, it's, it gives you an opportunity to really do some, uh, some things that make the plane fly just really beautifully. And I'll give you a good example of how this applies to the real world. I'm working on a Navy project right now, and they're, um, if you didn't already know it, um, they're probably, the, the, the last manned fighter aircraft is probably the F-35 that's just now coming online. And, uh, and so they're already working towards unmanned airplanes for a lot of reasons. And basically because you don't have to keep a guy alive in there, you can make the plane do a lot more. And, um, and so uh, you're already seeing the X-47 taking off and landing on carrier and all that. Well, they have a new version uh, uh, coming down the line of a, a new, um, uh, it's called a U-Class. It's an uh, unmanned carrier launch strike and surveillance airplane. And all there's four big contenders uh, for this uh, vehicle for the Navy. And um, Boeing has one, and Northrop Grumman has one, and uh, General Atomics has one, and so on. And so the Navy's preparing for, for these kind of airplanes to come online, and they want to be able to evaluate them. And so they have to be able to, to land these airplanes on aircraft carrier autonomously. There's not a guy in there that's going, OK, I'm not quite so good here, you know, and, and go around. This airplane has to be smart enough to do it, and it has to be smart enough to let the landing signal officer have some means of saying, hey, robotic airplane, you're not doing what I want. Get out of here. Wave off. So there's, there's all these kinds of things that you don't anticipate. Well, in order to study all that, they can't pick one of those four designs that are being uh, proposed. You know, it's just not logical to do that. So the Navy wants to be studying a lot of this right now. So they said, hey, Robert Vest, will you design a hypothetical U-class airplane and uh, do all the aerodynamics on this thing uh, such that we can put it in the simulator and start studying all of these kinds of things. And you want that airplane to fly with rudder, giving it y'all and, and ailerons giving it roll and elevator giving it pitch and all that to be pure and it's a flying wing and so you got these control surfaces all over the place there's there's spoilers out here that open for drag rudders and they're like the b2 and there's 
trailing edge elevators and there's some more elevators out here and there's ailerons there's stuff everywhere well i'm doing the, this very type of mixing in the control laws right now with this airplane such that it, when you give it rudder it yaws when you give it elevator it pitches when you give it aileron it rolls and nothing else happens and all these surfaces are out there going like this and it just gives you what you want and so that is really amazing that we have that capability that are in these high class fighter aircraft that is right there in this little transmitter right here. You can dream all you want and you can set this airplane up to fly like an airplane that's pure. And it, and it could be of any configuration you want and you can make it fly better than it really is. And so, so it's a powerful, powerful tool and, um, and it has to be used wisely for sure because you can get yourself in trouble as much as you can get yourself out of trouble. So um, um, I, say, I say use the fundamental canned mixes first, the wing type stuff, and then sneak up on it and, and, and use, um, use switches to keep you out of trouble. I think my battery's getting ready to conk out here. Yeah, your uh, uh, out. Uh, uh, uh. You don't want to have that happen in the air. Yes, Glenn? This, of course, some of these features are probably only available on that 18 channel receiver on the transmitter. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, say a 9 channel. The 9 has almost more than this one. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Look at this thing. This has uh, 16 programmable mixes. And I showed you a lot of power in all canned mixes that aren't one of those 16. And then, uh-oh, the battery did die. This airplane just crashed, friends. So, yeah. So, uh, but I, I showed you, you know, that you have a whole bunch of canned mixes that, that are kind of taking the power or, or the confusion away from you and then you can take 16 more mixes on top of this and you can have a blast. So you can sit in your living room and say, man I wonder what would happen if I did this and you can, you can work these mixes and look at them on the screen and look at your foam airplane on the tabletop and see the effects of these things and it's even more fun to go out to the field get in the air, fly it normal, and flip a switch to turn a mix on and go, man, okay, yeah. It's, it's, a, really, it's a really piece of this hobby that's kind of fun. It's, a, it's an exploration that, that um, came with these kind of radios, you know. So it's, um, the sky's the limit, literally. And um, any other questions, you know, about, about uh, things that you've wondered? Yes. Can you, can you touch on Elron differentials where... You know how a plane turns, and yeah, it, what happens is, um, man, this thing went way over. Okay. <laughs> what happens is, is, is um, basically, if you're trying to, to roll right, here's what you do. Okay, so really, what you're doing on this wing, whether it be symmetrical airfoil or not, you know, you're producing lift. So as you raise this aileron and lower this aileron, you're taking lift off of this wing, and drag is really a function of the lift and you're adding lift to this wing. So you think the airplane's just gonna roll right along the center line like that. But since you're taking some drag off of this, take a drag, drag off of the high aileron wing and you're adding drag to the low aileron wing, it rolls like that and it yaws like that. And some airplanes are different than others. Some are, are more pure and don't have that big, that big of an effect. So the way that you deal with it, the way differential works, is you, you let the down going aileron move less than the up going aileron. So that's what a pure roll would look like and the way that you study it is you come across the field as, and, and you pull your airplane up at a 45 degrees facing away from you and just do a half roll. And if you do a half roll and notice that the nose goes one way or the other, it tells you which wing is draggy. Okay. And you do it, you do it kind of into the wind so you don't have wind effects, you know, kind of yawing it, and it and on a calmer day. So, so think about this, the airplane pitches up, you do a roll, and if there's a yaw component in there, the nose will go somewhere. And so, it tells you, oh, the direction that it went is the side that got draggier. So you take it, it's, most of the time, you, you reduce the downward going aileron compared to the upward going aileron. And there is the ability to do that in these radios in the differential uh, program. It's not in the mixing menu. Um, and I think they call it differential steel. Yeah, there it is. So, so there it is. So you just, you have the ability to put it different differential in different flight modes and all that but basically what this says is you can you can um, you can make it be positive or negative which makes the downward aileron go less than the upward or 
or if you go to the other side, it makes it go more than the upward. And you just keep flying the airplane until you get it to where you do those half rolls and it doesn't, the nose doesn't move. And then you can string a roll and it's pure. It, you know, it just rolls and it doesn't yaw anywhere. So, you know, all of these tools are here because people figured out how to make their planes fly better with them. And so they say, let's dump them in the programs, you know. So you, you test it on a 45 and then well that's just that's just an level. easy way it's an easy way to expose it to you you know okay. to let you see where the nose goes but the effect you know? would be the same as yeah and then and or. yeah and then once you once you get that differential right and you do this like this it'll roll pure you know and so um, there's a there's obviously the airplanes are not loaded the same doing this as it is this but but if you have enough speed it is the airspeed you know, there's no angle of attack. It's just a reference with respect to the ground. It's still accelerating up like that. So, so that's what, you know, that's the way you, you expose the problem to you. And uh, um, it's amazing when you take these little fine details. You know, it's fun to go out to the field and just cut up and fly and zoom around and all that. But just a little bit of effort, just say, today I want to understand a rudder to aileron mix so that I can make this plane coordinate on its own, your, your decathlon. I just want to see that that thing is coordinated in a turn and you do nothing else. You just work on that one mix. You'll come back going, wow, that's pretty neat, you know, because, you know, now I don't ever have to think that the, you know, that the airplane's rolling left and yawing right and not wanting to turn, you know, it'll just coordinate right in there. So you do that on one weekend and then you'll kind of go, hey, this mixing isn't so tough because it's not. It's, uh, it's intimidating because there's all kinds of, you know, menus in here and all kinds of uh, buttons and things, but, but really they, they try to simplify it to a level to, w to where it's really straightforward to do, you know. I think the intimidating part to me is, is knowing when to use it and, and to keep yourself out of trouble because I'm afraid that I'm going to get myself in trouble by using some of these mixes like you were saying. Well, first of all, you always have me and Larry and other guys to, to you know, to be your crutch. But second of all, put it on a switch. There you go. Get up in the air, get up on the air, fly around normal, and then turn the mix on, fool around, see if it did anything good for you, and then turn it back off. And, you know, you have a, you have a, a emergency switch, okay. you know, That's and, uh, uh, you know, so, so it's a, it's a great way to just kind of uh, bail out, you know. Mm -hmm. Do one at a time, to... like he said, because yeah. you go in there and try to do too much at once, and you lose like track you said, of where you are. Yeah. yeah. Like when he's talking about doing knife edge, just start off with the aileron first and get the get the roll out of it first, because I've gone in there and tried to get oh, I'm going to add in elevator and all that, and and one can override. You know, you can overcorrect with one by adding too much in seconds. Yeah. So just do one at a time. I'll tell you what. Um, Airplanes with a lot of dihedral are more challenging to get the, the mixing right because they have a lot of lateral stability. They want to level themselves. So when you side slip the airplane, it rolls, and then as you let go, it tries to level itself. So these mixes are, are harder to do on a plane that's extremely stable by design, but they're not impossible. And if, if you guys want to jump into a little challenge, any single one of you, every single one of you that want to try it, Let's just do a knife edge mix on your airplane. I'll show you how to. I see a lot of people coming out there and doing knife edges. It's fun. It's something cool. You know, hey, I'm flying my airplane on, on the side. Well, I'll show you how to make it to where you can just hold top rudder and just drive down the field. And it'll be kind of cool to go out there and see a trainer plane with dihedral doing that and with just top rudder. So uh, it, it, it's not always possible, but it usually is. So if you guys want to learn that or any mix, if you want to work that throttle to, to elevator mix, if you want to work anything to try to take away an inherent problem in your airplane, I'm, a, I'm game for you. And, uh, and, and what would be cool is to see 10 different kinds of airplanes out there come down the field doing a knife edge pass and the guy just <laughs> holding top rudder. Then you kind of say, wow, this is pretty amazing, you know? And, uh, but, but it's possible. It's absolutely possible. Yes? Flaps elevator mix is a common mix. There's a, there's a lot of things. Oh, this has flap mixing, too, that's built in. Um, it has a flap program that... Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons. It, it's all the kind of the force arrangement of the airplane, but as you can imagine, this tail is riding in the influence of the wing. 
okay and if it's a low wing it's riding in a different flow field than if it's a high wing when, a, when your wing makes lift it's throwing the air at the ground so if the tail happens to be in downstream of that it's seeing this downward coming air and then as you throw flaps down you really change the airflow angle so this tail is back here with no you know it's trying to trim the airplane and pitch and if you don't do anything and the airflow angle changes you've changed the angle of attack of the tail trim changes so there are, there are cases where that, that angle of attack turns into an upwash or a downwash or whatever, depending on what the configuration of the airplane is, what the airfoils are, what the flaps, are, you know, camber is, everything. And, um, and so you just say, I don't care what it does, let me just do something about it. So there's this flap mix here that um, somewhere here in the flap set up. I think it just turns on when you have the flaps set up, so let me go back to the... See, a lot of these menus, they don't put them in your face until you really have flaps. So we go back to this aircraft type, and we tell us, tell ourselves that we have one aileron and two flaps, let's say. Let's just try that. So go back to the main screen. So you, it, the radio has to know that you have flaps. So there we go, flap system. So now what it allows you to do is... Uh, you put it on a switch and let's say we put it on switch D here okay and then here's what you have so in the three positions of this switch there are three flat positions so you can come up here and you say I want the flaps for takeoff down you know 15 percent you can look at the throw obviously I don't have any flaps here but when I put down the flaps for takeoff position the elevator doesn't do anything I mean the plane doesn't change trim so I don't care about that of mixing an elevator in with it but when I come up here to some intermediate flat position where they're down let's say 60 or, or 50 or something here the, the airplane pitches up so you go over here to elevator and you just give it a little down elevator when the flaps are in that position and then you can come down here when you're at full flaps a whole bunch of flaps Whatever it is, it's not going to be 100% because you're not going to have these things hanging straight down. But whatever it is, you need a little more mix, or you need some mix that's the opposite sign. You can do it. But let's say we needed 20% 20, um, 20 offset. You know, that's probably way too much. But just to show that in those three positions, you can have three different mixes, and it'll automatically trim that for you. Now, you notice down here it says there's a speed thing right here. So it tells you, as you're putting your flaps down, if you hit the switch and the flaps just go down that, then the airplane will really buck. So you have the ability to slow the flaps down so that they'll come down realistically and then the trim offset happens realistically or slowly. And so you can put a speed on here that basically slows this down. And you can tell it, oh, I want it to go down in a whole second for that whole amount of travel. So it fades the elevator trim in with the flaps coming down slow and suddenly you don't ever worry about elevator to flat mix ever again you know you don't have to push a stick anymore it just did it for you and yes I have this on my airplanes my jets and all that and um, and and uh, you know so if you can dream it you can do it with these radios and sometimes things are hidden from you because they don't want to confuse you with something that you're not going to use so they hide it in the wing type if you don't tell me you have flaps I'm not giving you the programs for flaps you know anything else Please come up to me at the field and let me help you mix something on your airplane. You'll love it. You'll just love it. All right. Thanks, guys. Now this battery's dead, so I put this on the black side, and I know I have to charge it. Robert, uh, can you show us how to do a torque roll mix? <laughs> hey, hey, that's the next thing I want to tell you guys about. Uh, and it'll be the next meeting that I speak to you about this, but these receivers now, they have, you know, AS3X that you've seen with yeah. some of these little airplanes. You notice I fly these little foam airplanes out at the field and it's windy and they're just like on a rail and doing all this crazy stuff and damping quick and all that. AS3X is three axis stabilization, but it's also the ability for three axis heading hold. So if you tell it, I want these wings, if I'm not touching the stick and I put those wings right there and something disturbs this airplane and it goes like that, it'll go like that. It'll come back. So there's, there's a, a guy who does one of the gyros that we use in our, it's not AS3X, it's not a Spectrum product, but it's a gyro that we use in a lot of our jets, uh, Demon Cortex. There's a guy at Toledo last year that, that would hover one of these type of airplanes at the Demon Cortex booth just by using throttle. 
and it would just go because the gyro was doing the work. And, uh, and the, the perfect example of how that all can work is, you know, the, the wing leveling that happens on that Apprentice S. You know, that airplane, you can get it all like this and flip the switch and it'll go whoop right back up right. Well, you don't want necessarily the gyros to fly the airplane for you. You want them to help you. If I'm out there on a windy day and the plane's going like this and I told it to go like that, the gyro will make it do that. So, so it's, uh, it has the ability to make the airplane fly, uh, uh, ignore the disturbances, or fly as if it was a heavier airplane. So you got this little 12-ounce uh, thing right here that can come out and fly on a windy day when you would have your giant scale plane parked. So it's pretty neat stuff. And, um, and i got to show you those receivers. I have a six-channel one that I've been flying in those foam airplanes, and I've been flying it in my Inversa, 30cc airplane. And they have a seven and nine channel coming out. They should be out any day. And, uh, and you can have that capability in your airplanes and you program it with this. <laughs> it's so cool. So you can look at it on the screen and you can go, oh, I, want, I want a little more uh, stability augmentation. Boop, there it is. And you plug it into the receiver and it does it and then the airplane flies better. And, and I'll help you with that too. <laughs> Except the droid guy. Yeah, if you can, you can get the app. Does that connect by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? A wire. A yeah, cable. Yeah, it, cl it plugs into the to the bind port on your receiver, so it's uh, pretty neat stuff. So that's another thing. Come up to the field. Let me show you that little receiver. It costs about a hundred bucks, and it has all that in it. Neat stuff. And it all is made possible because cell phones drive the world, mm -hmm. and these little accelerometers in here, and little and little um, uh, GPS, and all that sensors. They're they're miniaturized. They're MEMS sensors. All that's mass produced, so they take those good pieces out and use them for good use. <laughs> so. All right, well, I'll do that sometime here.